the ego belief system is is a belief system in lack. And so we could say that when Abraham Maslow made his like hierarchy of needs, he put basic needs at the bottom of the pyramid and then you work your way up to the pinnacle, to the top of the pyramid, which is self-actualization. Which I would say is self-realization, the same thing that I talk about, Ramana Maharshi, John of God, all the spiritual teachers talk about self-realization or self-actualization. Or as the Greeks said, know thyself. So, you could say that those lower, seemingly lower levels of need on the pyramid are basically, the reason they seem to be there is because of the ego's belief and filter in lack. The egoic belief system is a belief system of lack, so that when the mind believes in that, it's, it's perceiving its whole environment as lacking, you know, the body lacking air, the body lacking, you know, you know, to be cooled down or lacking, lacking something like being thirsty or hungry, or having uh, sexual thoughts, lustful thoughts, or feeling like you need, you want to be satiated and satisfied in some way, or an orgasm. <laughs> it would be like a temporary fix, you know, for a sexual craving, and then it will come again, seemingly, and come again, just like being hot, or being hungry, or being thirsty, or whatever. And that's the human condition, that's like the cycles of, of lack, and then something to meet that lack, you know, that, that provides some kind of satisfaction, whether it seems to be a physical satisfaction, or a psychological satisfaction, or both. Um, it's, it's that same kind of cycle. So, when the mind believes in lack, it's it has this unconscious belief in lack, and you might say the whole purpose of mind training, the whole purpose of exposing, of looking where the emotions are, the charges, the contraction, the constrictions and everything, are all part of healing. And that the spirit meets the mind where it believes it's at, so, so sexuality is, is something that's not like cut off, on the spiritual journey, as you journey towards wholeness, it's it's more that that as you focus on your mind training and you expose those beliefs in lack, then your whole perception of the world changes, your perception of the body changes, and what seems to be external attractions, uh, which really aren't external at all, uh, that you start to realize that they're all being generated in consciousness. Uh, some of you might have seen that quantum physics movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? You know, where the Ramtha character, Jay-Z Knight, she's, she's talking about how, she's talking about the brain and peptides and neurotransmitters and, and these peptides being sent into the bloodstream and that they seem to be involving things like lust and so forth, but everything starts in consciousness. And so as you open up towards holiness, you're really just asking for a divine purpose that will lift you up, that will take you higher and higher into higher states of mind and consciousness. And as you go into higher states of consciousness, everything that you perceive changes. And including your discussions, we'll say, around sexuality. Uh, you know, you, you can only imagine, you know, if you follow John of God around with a microphone, that his perceptions around the body and then around sexuality might be different from a lot of other people on the planet because his consciousness is, is in a different place. So we're getting to the point where we're starting to realize that I was talking about morality, you know, and judging this behavior and that behavior. Certainly sexuality is, is tossed around quite a lot by morality. There's all kinds of moral judgments around sexuality but if you move around from culture to culture, you'll see there's a quite a variation in some of these uh, moralistic views of sexuality. But the higher you go in consciousness, you, you start to realize that it becomes um, less a topic of interest, less a topic of discussion, because the denial and the repression and the indulgence that are around it uh, start to fade away. The denial fades, the, the repression fades, and the indulgence fades as well as 
you are, we'll say, filled up by the Spirit's purpose, then you no longer are kind of looking out through the ego's filter and trying to satiate in that way. It, it actually changes and turns around quite a bit. So, it can be very helpful in that sense when, when you have a lot of open discussions around sexual thoughts and sexual attractions and, and so forth. Because if those have been the taboo things and the things that you don't talk about and so on and so forth, then, then the way to undo that sense of denial and hush-hush repression is to start talking about them in a very open way. And, you know, and even around like the fears, like Laurie had talked about in an earlier session around the idea of, what you mentioned, Jehovah Witnesses, or around polygamy. Uh, and, and if there's a fear around, uh-oh, if I'm going out to a community and if, if you have doubts or, or thoughts or suspicions, it's good to just talk about them openly, and especially where you seem to have charges or judgments on those thoughts. Because that's what you really want to get at. You want to get to a point where you can let go of the judgments around it.